Okay, I just start uh, to type uh, some of the program code because my typing skills are horrible. But this one I'm trying to do actually write a program that will determine what the rental amount will be based on is it on the first zero floor, the basement, first floor, second floor, third floor, is it zero bedroom, one bedroom, two bedroom. So you can see we have like a matrix. So we have or a table. So we have to use a two dimensional array. And for this, I'm going to assign these values directly to us. I don't have to write them in. So when I go and define my array, immediately I'm going to go right there and go INT. Notice all these numbers are integer value. It's a two dimensional array. We have to give it a name. We'll call rents equals and now curly parentheses or brackets and let's go to the first row in the first row we have to list what you see right here the 500 the 575 and the 612 i'm not going to put the zero that's the index i'll use the index for that 500 comma 575 comma 612 oh i like spaces between them Here we go. And now I'm done with the first row. Close the brackets. Now comma. Let's put in the second row and I'll line them up so it'll look nice. I'll go like this so I'll be nice. There we go. So for the second row, oh, I thought I lined them up there. There we go. What do we have for the second row? We have 611, comma. 712 comma 813 curly bracket comma go to the next row curly bracket and what do we have 630 comma 719 comma 950 close that comma and go to the last one curly bracket 795 comma 920 comma 1200 curly bracket another curly bracket now to close and a semicolon to close the whole thing i guess i'll put the semicolon here take it out of here take the curly bracket out of this now maybe i'll indent this to make it look nice so we have two sets of curly brackets when you want to define an array, a two-dimensional array, and assign values directly to it. Now I'm going to have the user ask in for like a floor number and how many bedrooms and have the program let them know what the rent will be. So the user will, uh, will give... Oh, that, I guess, not wrong. We'll select the floor and number of bedrooms. The program will display The rent for that apartment so since the user is going to be entering values maybe i'll use here we go import um been using a lot of scanners so i'll skip scanner java x dot swing dot jo option pen So let me define a string here, string um, APT for apartment, and 
and I need to define two things, I and T, because when you ask from, you also need to know what the number of bedrooms, so let's go bedrooms, and we need one for the floor. Which floor and how many bedrooms? You have to specify. Semicolons missing here. So let's ask for that. APT, that's a string, equals JO option pen dot show input dialog. And for this, we're going to say what? Um, let's do the null first, comma. What are we going to ask for? A floor number first? Enter a floor number. And that really should be in double quotation. So this is a dialog box that will show up on my screen. And once I see it there, this is, we're looking for the floor. I need to convert that to a number, that's floor. So floor equals, I need to parse that number. Integer dot parse, parse int, because that's an integer number. We're gonna convert that. Parse what? The string apt. And now let's copy this and just copy. So this section really get floor number. This section get number of bedrooms. Enter instead of a floor, and say enter number of bedrooms. Oh, I already have that, and that's actually I called bedrooms here. So let's see what it looks like so far. Here we go. Enter a floor number. I want on the first floor. That's a zero for the basement. Okay. Enter number of bedrooms. Here's a problem, eight. I don't have eight bedrooms. So maybe what I should do is validate the values. Here we go, do, curly bracket to validate this. Keep us inside the loop here. While, while what? How many floors do we have? While floors have to be, capital F, greater than or equal to zero. or floors less than or equal to three in this example. I can't have more than three floors. I don't have them there. You can see. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Oh, floor, not floors, I called it. So this actually will validate the floor just to make sure. And now let's validate the number of bedrooms again. So that's a do statement. Again, the reason I'm using do, 
because I want the program to go through that loop at least once. While, while what? Bedrooms. I use with an S bedrooms or bedroom, where is it? Yeah, with an S. While it's less than zero. Repeat. Actually, this one is wrong. I don't want to repeat while it's bigger. That's a valid value. I want to repeat while it's less than zero or greater than three. Or bedrooms greater than two. So now I can validate my input. So here we go. Number of floors. We have zero through three. How about if I put a negative five? No. Enter a floor number. Zero through three. Seven. Nope. Second floor. Yep, we got it. Number of bedrooms. Negative four. Nope. Three bedroom. Nope. Two bedrooms. That's good. And now it's good. So once we have the two numbers, we know which floor and which bedroom, we need to print here, display the rent. And to display the rent, I'll push it up there. Here we go, so I want you to see it. We're gonna make it show up in a, another box. So JO option pen. dot show message dialog and the first piece is null comma and the second one I'm going to write the rent for here we go I'm going to make it bigger the rent for space a maybe i want to specify what floor and what bedroom so you'll know what we're looking at the rent for a then put a space plus bedrooms so the rent for two bedrooms three bedrooms zero bedrooms plus maybe i want to write the floor i'll go on the next line so it will look nicer so you get to see everything. Plus what? Um, space bedrooms. I want the word bedrooms. Apartment. On floor. Now let's put the floor plus the floor on floor zero, floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four, plus, I'll hit enter so I can type them all in one line, double quotation space is, we'll put the dar sign. And now comma, I mean a comma plus, and let's put in what actually, which value. So that's in location rents. I need to specify the floor. And I need to specify the bedrooms. And I think that should do it. If we did it right, I think that should do it. Let me just take, take all this extra stuff out of here. That's really my whole program. 
Let me save it and let me run it. I already validated this. I know how it works. So I want uh, I went on the third floor and I wanted two bedrooms. I think that was 1200 bucks right there. You can see it. Third floor, that's zero floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. That should be 1200 bucks. There we go. The rent for a two bedroom apartment on floor three is 1200 bucks. Uh, run it again. Floor zero. And I really want to get uh, zero bedroom. I can't afford it. I'm looking for something cheap. And that's this one, the 500 bucks. Let's see if we're getting that. The rent for a zero bedroom apartment on floor zero is 500 bucks. So the program is working the way we planned it. Now, are you always going to assign these values to it? The answer is no. Sometimes you want to read them or initialize them. So in the next video, that's what I'm going to do.